Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig and there are some incredible organizations out there doing great work to help our veterans, retired firefighters, retired police officers overcome things like anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and more. And they're doing it in ways that does not require uh, pharmaceutical drugs of any kind. Now, I spoke with Tammy Olovic of Saddles in Service about her service and how she helps heroes. And I originally found her through a post on Instagram which was calling for a boot drive, which we'll get into, where people can donate their cowboy boots to these heroes so that they can learn how to work with horses, how to ride horses for better mental health. And this is an incredible organization that I'm a huge fan of all the way around. So if you guys have some extra boots just laying around, they can go to good use and you can help out these heroes as you will see in my conversation with Tammy coming up. Let's get into it. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? So what we do is when we get a new hero in, and so we call them all heroes, right? Because they're not clients, they're not patients, they're all heroes. I mean, they're, they're all our heroes, and it's veterans, active duty, we have law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, you know, all first responders, right? Even RNs in emergency rooms, doctors, um, we've got them all. So um, when our heroes sign up for our program, um, I'll meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, give them a tour. I kind of get to know them a little bit to kind of find out. Um, okay, for instance, I have a guy who has super high anxiety, right? So I kind of need to know what are they dealing with? Super high anxiety. So I put him with a horse that has the most anxiety. And what happens is he steps out of his anxiety to keep her comfortable, safe, and so he, the feeling, it frees him of his anxiety. Wow. It's just for hours, right? So that feeling is just so, um, you know, it just renews him. And so I, and people at first said, oh, no, you should put him with a real calm horse. But my thing is, what's he going to learn? He's not going to learn anything from a calm horse that wants to try and lick him all day long, right? He needs to see the anxiety in Barbie, he could see his own anxiety. So, um, so what we'll do is I'll pair them with a horse. I'll match them with one of our, we have 14 horses, um, and the majority are rescue horses. So they come with a lot of, um, abuse, um, anxiety as well, right? These horses are, are broken in some way, just like a lot of, I mean, many of it, well, we're all broken in some way, I think, but, um, and so these heroes, when they come in, I'll match them with a horse and a wrangler. So I have um, about 20 wranglers right now. The majority of them are somehow connected to military or first responders, whether they're a spouse, whether they are actually a military or first responder or their children. So our wranglers are all part of that population as well that we serve. So they're matched together. They teach them about the predator prey relationship. Cause when you're working with a horse, it's important to understand that that's a prey animal. So you have to gain that horse's trust. You need their trust, their respect. And um, these horses give you instant feedback, right? So say for instance, you're going up to your horse, but you're kind of in a, aggressive stance and maybe you don't mean to be but that's just how you stand that horse may look at you and say whoa 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 uh-uh you go sit and time out and get nice and then come back right I mean they will give you instant feedback and um it's a lot of mindfulness techniques really you can use with horses um the difference is you get instant feedback whereas if you're doing yoga or some of the other mindfulness techniques if your mind starts wandering or whatever it may be, you don't get instant feedback, but the horse is gonna, he's, they're not gonna lie. <laughs> and so um, 
They learn how to lead their horse, groom their horse. Then we get in a big round pen and we teach them um, how to move their horse in the round pen, both directions. Um, and it's all using body language, nonverbal communication. Um, and then once the horse gives you a sign that, hey, you know what? I can trust you to be my leader, my alpha, because the horse needs an alpha because they're a prey animal. Um, you'll look for those signs and then you'll just kind of drop everything. Tur I turn my back to them. Some people do different things. And if that horse is ready to join up with you, that they trust you, they're going to walk right up to you. And I've seen these men and women just, they go into tears and just grab that horse and just, you know, the feeling that this horse said, Hey, I want to be with you. And then you can walk all around. That horse is going to follow you wherever you go. Cause that horse is joined up. So it's important that when they are doing this with the horse, that they are in the here and now they have to be in the present. They can't be thinking about past events or worrying about future stressors because if you are you lose the connection with the horse and the horse is going to tell you okay i see you don't want to be with me so i don't want to be with you um and it's it's the craziest thing how it works i will tell you it, it's amazing to watch this um but these heroes then are are getting that sense again of what it's like to be in the present and just be themselves right you know, right there in the middle of the round pen with this 1200 to 2000 pound horse. And hopefully they take that back with them when they go home, when they're with their families, they can practice being in the present more. Um, so then they learn how to ride. If they want to ride, everyone learns bareback. Everybody learns how to bareback first because you can really get a feel for the horse, get your balance. Then we go to saddles. Um, we, and this is kind of a quick version. We go into the arena. They learn how to do barrels if they want They do pole bending. Um, and we go on trails. We do roping clinics if someone wants to learn how to rope. So we're doing a full on experience with the horse and it's all natural horsemanship. It's not just a one day clinic or a two day clinic or cause it's, you need more time with the horse. And that's what that research that we were part of, um, the research showed that it takes at least three visits with your horse for your brain to start catching up with what your emotional feelings are. So, and the longer you're with them, the more change you're going to see. Wow. So you're doing a lot, it sounds like, because not only are you helping out are heroes but you're also finding purpose and a home for these horses who may not have had that before so like you're helping everyone yes yes and you know i have a cute little story it was just so hard it was so touching oh my gosh we have this horse named tequila he's a um he's a paint beautiful horse, beautiful horse. When he came to us, he was 21. So he had been a stud horse all his life, right? So he's a stallion. He was just used to breed. Well, they keep him in a little stall. So they do these circles. So he's crippled in his back legs. And he just had been gelded. So he didn't get the memo that he was no longer a stud and that he was crippled <laughs> when he got here, but he's good. Um, but when he got here, you couldn't even get near this horse. You could not get near this horse. He was just waiting for you to beat him. So we did, we've had to do some um, therapeutic work on his hooves to we're straightening out his back legs and his hooves slowly, right? You got to do it slowly. Um, one day we took him out and I said, let's see if the horse knows anything. So my head wrangler, my head horse trainer is a Vietnam veteran. He's awesome. Uh, he was a green beret in Vietnam. So, you know, he's kind of a badass. I gotta wow. say. And so, um, and he took out tequila. He comes back with tequila and tequila was a foot taller. I swear that horse was a foot taller. And he goes, 
he is remarkable in the round pen. He knows everything. And the look on the horse's face was like, did you see I'm worth something? Look what I can do. I, I have a purpose. And that's the whole thing where you said, we're giving these horses a purpose as well. So I have some veterans and it's interesting that it's mostly the males that uh, when they first meet tequila, there's just something about that horse and they connect and they want that horse. They want to gain that horse's trust. And so it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Wow. How do people find you? How do the heroes find out about you? And is there like any period where they have to get over skepticism about the services that you offer? offer? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Um, a lot of it's word of mouth, a lot of word of mouth. Um, then through social media, social media has just exploded for us. Um, and then when we're on the news, we've been on the local news. Um, and you know, it's funny you say that there is no skepticism and this is why I think. So this is my take on it all. Uh, Cause other people ask me that have foundations and I know what the one common denominator is or what it isn't depending on who we're talking about. My husband served 25 years in the Navy. My son is a cop and he's a army reservist. My other son is in the hiring process for the fire department. My daughter-in-law is a nurse. My sister's a nurse. I have a long line of firefighters in my family and veterans so when people step on the ranch, they're already with people who understand them. Like we're family, it's instant family. So that's why we don't see any skepticism. People are just like, they know they belong. Um, whereas if they go to a place maybe that doesn't have any veterans or first responders, or doesn't really have that knowledge, I think you have to earn the trust, but we're already family. And I really believe that because that's what we see all the time. That's amazing. That's really special. Wow. It sounds like you're on to something incredible. And I can't wait until you actually have like all of the funding that you need. So you don't need to put in your own money all the time. Yes, yes. And once we get all the funding we need, here's my next little deal. Our next set, when we bring in more horses, I want to bring in the BLM Mustangs. That's our next thing. Because wow. that's rescue horses as well, because they've slaughtered those horses if they're not adopted. So, oh yeah, and I can already tell you, I have so many veterans and first responders. Oh yeah, can I help? Can I help? You know, they, they want that challenge. It's an adrenaline rush. And so um, that'll be the next thing. Um, and you know, it's, I think what's really sad about these, the rescue horses that we do have, all of them were picked up at those slaughter auctions where these people, the, these, I don't even know what you call them, but they, they purchase them to just take to Mexico and slaughter them. Wow. And because they get money based on weight. And so, um, all of these were at slaughter auction. Now, when I've, found out about you it was through the hashtag i believe cowboy boots because you're doing a boot drive right now and it's an ongoing yeah. boot drive can you tell me a little bit about um why you're doing a boot drive and how somebody can help with that sure sure so um I have a few new heroes that are had started the program um one of them um, had, um, attempted suicide a couple times and, um, they did not have the means to buy boots yet. And the family situation was, is not good. And my Wrangler who works with this hero had said to me, gosh, they just sat there and cried with the horse, like for two hours. And it just, you know, it, it weighs heavy on us. It does, you know, because we care for these heroes so much. And to see that, that this, this one hero is in so much pain. And so I think they had been here about three weeks. And for some reason, I had a really bad feeling. And I was like, gosh, 
you know, I almost feel like they're not getting boots or, or are they trying to tell us that they're just not going to be around long enough to get boots? Like I, I, there was something that was really bothering me and something really bothering the Wrangler. And I called, um, this heroes, um, I guess it's kind of her sponsor because these are all, these are active duty heroes. So these are active duty military. And I said, you know, I'm really concerned and I don't know why this is bothering me. And the next morning she said, Hey, something happened. And like, I think you were right on. And so when um, I said, okay, we got to do something. So I was talking with my Wranglers and I go, I don't, does anybody have extra boots? And then someone said, why don't we do a boot drive? And I said, Oh my gosh, let's, let's do it. So when she got here yesterday, we had some boots donated. Those boots fit her. She got to, for the first time, take her horse and lead him around the property and walk him and do everything. And when she left, she was, I get the goosebumps. Oh my gosh. When she left, you could just see how she had just opened. It had done so much for her. So, and we have a lot of other heroes that come out that haven't had boots or, you know, working gloves or hats. And so, you know, if I could afford to buy everyone's stuff, I would, <laughs> but this has been amazing. And, you know, a lot of people, it makes them feel good too, that they can give back to a veteran or a first responder, you know, Hey, we've got this stuff sitting around. I'd love to be part of that. So that's why. This is how it all came about from a girl and her horse and just watching her and my heart breaking everybody else's. And so that's how that came about. That's amazing. So you're always running the boot drive right now and anyone can send you boots at any time for future heroes to wear. Yes. Yes. Or work gloves, you know, horse gloves, work gloves, anything that would be horse related. Absolutely. Yes. And once we get too many, then we'll say, okay, that's good. Thank you, everybody. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can get too many boots at some point. <laughs> so that's um, a good problem to have, though. <laughs> it really is. And, you know, it's been amazing how many people, like, I'm getting um, calls from people on the East Coast, in the Midwest. That are all sending us, you know, hey, I have this and this. Could you use this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that's been really cool how people just have jumped right on board. That's so. beautiful. I love it. What about in terms of fundraising? What can somebody do in that regard? Or are you looking for funds from businesses? What is your approach there if anybody is out there interested in donating monetarily oh that's perfect yes so we um on our website anyone can donate um right on the website they can sponsor a horse um they can do a recurring payment to sponsor a horse um they can even sponsor a hero that's not on the website yet but that's something they could put in the comments hey i want to sponsor a hero um we also well with covid i we don't, we were going to do a, you know, fundraising event in the fall, but now we don't know what we can do. So, um, yeah, we're applying for grants. <laughs> we, um, are going to go to businesses and try and get sponsorship through businesses. Um, the Chula Vista Police Officers Association sponsored one of our horses for a year. So they gave us $2,400. That covers its feed, their farrier bill, their worming, and their vaccinations. So there's multiple ways to do it. Um, they can mail us checks. They can, they can fundraise for us as well. They got um, Facebook, they can do a fundraiser to support saddles and service. Oh, that's perfect. So when somebody's birthday comes up, they can just say, I want a donation for this on my birthday. Yes. Yes. And then they can also, you know, smile.amazon.com. When all of us shop on Amazon, I think, well, if you go to smile.amazon instead of just amazon.com, you can choose the charity of your choice. So if they choose saddles and service, every time they purchase anything, 
Amazon donates 0.05%. Now, that may seem like a little amount, but it adds up you know, and they will donate to us. Every, they send the money to us every quarter. And so that's another way to do it just from your shopping. So, you know, I think we got last time it was like 90 some dollars. Okay. That may not seem a lot to some people, but Hey, that bought how many bales of hay, you know, I look at it in terms of, Hey, that's so many bales that we don't have to purchase this time. You know, yep. So I mean, every little bit helps at this point, right? Every, yes, any, any bit, you know, and we thought once someone said, okay, we have like, I don't know, close to 22,000 followers on Facebook. Someone said, we should just ask everyone to just donate $1. And I was like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> so any, any little bit helps, you know, some people donate $5, it adds up, it all adds up. Huge thanks to Tammy for spending the time with me to explain all about Saddles and Service and how she helps the rescue horses and our heroes come together so that everything is just so much better. I think her mission and her organization is incredible. Now, if you guys are interested in donating boots, hats, gloves, whatever, um, you can do that at the address right here, and it's also in the description as well. So I'm gonna be donating these area planos for the Saddles and Service boot drive that's an ongoing thing. And if you guys have any boots that are just sort of sitting around collecting dust that you don't wear as often, you know, they definitely can go to good use at the Saddles and Service ranch for our heroes there. So definitely consider donating. Thank you again to Tammy for spending the time and thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of the Saddles in Service organization. I just think it's great. And you can always learn more about them at saddlesinservice.org. Peace, everybody. Have a great day. Now you can help the heroes by sending in some boots. If you have a pair that you don't wear, they can be used on the Saddles and Service Ranch with the good work that they do. And when you send those boots, you are helping too. Yeah. Gotta love the Saddles and Service organization doing great work there. If you have some boots, you should totally consider sending them in. At least the ones that you don't wear as frequently. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next time.